Hi, and welcome back to In the Studio here at Davis Media Access. This is the COVID-19 remote production version. And we're really uh, glad that you're tuned in. You can find all of this, this programming on dctv.davismedia.org and also check out Davis Media Access on YouTube for a fabulous archive. I'm really pleased today to welcome back my guest. She's a longtime friend and someone I interviewed last year about her work with Healthcare for All in California. I'd like to welcome Millie Bronstein. Welcome, Millie. Oh, well, welcome. I mean, <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Good to see you, Robin. <laughs> Good to see you, too. So I know that you are fresh off a huge meeting today, and we're, we're going to get to that. But first, let's, uh, let's just kind of start at the beginning and remind people you are the chair of the Yolo County chapter of a statewide organization that is advocating for single-payer health care. Tell us a little bit more about when the organization came into being and what you've been doing during that time. Okay, the organization came into being in the late 90s following um, a failed initiative for single payer in California. And so single payer um, advocates who all got together and formed uh, a large coalition and called it Healthcare for mm -hmm. All. And so there's chapters now throughout the state of California. And so the, the movement has been advocating for single payer for that time. Uh, successfully had two bills passed and, and uh, vetoed by Governor Schwarzenegger, but uh, we're in the process of moving forward. Great. And this is so timely. As I think you know, I've been doing a lot of programming around COVID-19 and its local impacts. Mm -hmm. And the pandemic has really highlighted all the inequities in our healthcare and, and other systems. So this is a very important conversation. Uh, I mentioned you are fresh off a, a big meeting. In fact, I think it's wrapping as we're recording this on August 13th. Uh, what was the purpose of the meeting and what were some of the outcomes? Okay, well, in California, there's been a lot of uh, work done to move California toward a single payer system where you have a unified financing system that includes every everybody in the state. And um, throughout the um, rolling out of the Affordable Care Act, which is the federal mm -hmm. legislation now that California has to respond to. And there's an opportunity to get waivers if the state has something in place that covers people just as well, if not, not better. So mm -hmm. as um, in moving forward now that the Affordable Care Act is up and implemented, then a commission was formed by um, well, it, it's been in formation, but it's finalized mm -hmm. with uh, Governor Newsom. And so that they have appointed, he has appointed uh, members to that commission as have uh, the assembly and the um, um, Senate. And so they are charged with looking and studying what we need to do to get a unified financing system in California that will provide mm -hmm. health care coverage for everybody. That's and a big so development that was, that you spoke last is. year. Yeah, that yes. commission wasn't in place. Right. You know, one of the things they, they I just... always wonder one of the things I always wonder about is, you know, there are other countries who who have implemented similar single payer systems and they do it, and yet there seems to be nothing but barriers here in this country. So what what gets in the way? Traditionally um it's been the the uh after after the war i think people were trying to figure out how to access and get health care so some of the companies then formed some insurance uh possibilities for their workers mm -hmm. and so the idea of having insurance caught on and so there was a proliferation of uh, like the blue cross which was you know a major innovation in, in the United States. So that traditionally has been there. And so the um, provide, people are used to that. And a lot of the industry that grew up around that really 
has fought the notion of having a single financing system. I think there's yeah. fear of the unknown, fear and, and real concern that there will be some changes in how people are earning their money, <laughs> you know, with uh, you won't right. be having the, the uh, corporate involvement that is there now. Yeah, yeah, I, I think what stands in the way is in a word profit. So uh -huh. you mentioned this meeting uh, today. Uh, there were some deliverables that were turned over to the commission. Can you talk about those a little bit? Yes, uh, they were they were to turn in a report to the governor and the legislature that was due in July. And of course, with the uh, COVID-19 situation, so many of the staff that are involved in that, uh, their mm -hmm. attention is devoted to the COVID crisis. And so they extended it until um, August. And so that this was giving um, a state of the affairs of what currently is going on in California, what some of the issues are, and certainly through the news, I imagine most everybody is aware of how uh, fragmented our system is and how disadvantaged mm -hmm. and uh, unjust really, so that people yeah. uh, have this varying uh, ability to access care and there's a lot of falling through the gaps. So anyway, they highlighted those issues and then we're talking about then some of the, the barriers now in order to moving to a unified financing system. Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. that uh, some of the initial thinking about how to move that direction was presented this morning. And so there's a lot of work to be done, but there's some real expertise working very hard here in California. Right. I mentioned that you are the chair of the Yolo County chapter. So that makes me think there yes. are other chapters of this organization around. And you're yes, basically grassroots folks who, who have been working uh, for years, as far as I can tell, for years to yes. push this forward. Mm -hmm. So a lot of work. What comes next? Can we break that down a little bit? Well, the public education is extremely important and the corporate control over so much of um, how money is being spent in the United States has really hampered the ability to get an accurate message out. Uh, the mm -hmm. media seems to be pretty well responding to uh, misinformation that they receive, some of it uh, if they're fed, you know, they're, the industry really has a very excellent system of um, getting their message out about it's socialized medicine, uh, we're going to go broke, it's going to cost too much, you know, so that there's a lot of misinformation out there that we need to help the public understand what, what it is that ha would happen and what it means to them. So that with a mm -hmm. unified financing system, Yes, they will pay some more taxes, but they won't have to pay any insurance premiums, you know, and they will yeah. get more benefits and everybody in California will be covered under this. So, so that's the direction we're going now is working with the public and then also with our legislators um, because they, we, they have to pass the laws and we have right. to make it politically feasible for them to do so. Right. Are you aware, uh, are there other similar grassroots initiatives uh, and people working with legislators in other states or is this a California out front and alone on this? No, there's the whole West Coast is working on it, Hawaii, Alaska. Um, I think mm -hmm. there's 26, 26 states right now that are very actively working on it. There's a, a national group called uh, that they get together for discussions and sharing ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, mm -hmm. I, I don't know for sure if we're further ahead than most of the states, but um, there's a lot of activity uh, going on in New York um, that are getting pretty close to, I think. Um, but That's it's uh, one thing to introduce a bill, another one to get it through. Yeah. Yeah, well, that that's good to hear that other states are uh, are on the on that path as well. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm wondering how the November elections is going to impact what's happening at the state level. Well, I think we all recognize that with the current administration, there's um, 
a, a threat to completely um, defund the Affordable Care Act uh, in Correct. terms of trying to get waivers to do something statewide with the control that there's that's there now. That can be very uncertain. In fact, any funding for health care on the state level from the federal government, which we, we depend greatly on, is very much in jeopardy. So um, probably as other people have been telling you that there's a lot of activity throughout the state to um, change administrations and also change people who are sitting in uh, Congress and uh, in the Senate, uh, as well mm -hmm. as here in the state, you know, making those kinds of moves. And uh, there is uh, some federal legislation that's been introduced uh, that there's um, two single payer bills that are in uh, Congress right now that are being held up, but nonetheless, they're there and they're not being talked about very much. Uh, the candidate, Bernie Sanders, of course, very much brought it out into the public where people now are actively talking about it, working on it, debating. Uh, and so that that is probably been one of the biggest boons to the movement is um, the press has to cover that because He's a right. political candidate. Right. You know, they're, debate, they're making those debates because I don't know that the general public even has any idea that as much work has been going on in California for over 30 years. And so, um, you know, it, because everybody's just told this is the way it is. And, you know, we're, we're going to get more people insured. And, and so somehow that, that having insurance seems to be the goal rather than looking at having access to health care. Right, because right. I think insurance people are finding is, it's not doesn't guarantee that you're going to get the care you need. Yeah, or that insurance you're going to be able to afford it. Can healthcare exactly? Healthcare. And exactly. you know, the, the problem for people isn't just the the premiums. It's the you know, even with insurance, the copays can be really high. A hospital stay or or you know, treatment for something like cancer can bankrupt people. I mean, that's the kind of right. situations that that people are faced with. We're down to our last few minutes, so um, I want to, I, I know we have a, a, a slide with, a, or a, a title with your website on it, and so we're going to um, mm -hmm. bring that up, and I get your newsletter, which is how I was kind of moved to reach out to you again, it, it jogged my memory, it's always very informative, and often there's a call to action, you know, you are asked to call a legislator, you asked to write a letter or something, is there anything currently on the table that you're seeing? seeking uh, public engagement with? Certainly in terms of being aware of the commission and uh, mm -hmm. sending input into the commission and be aware of what they're doing. So I did send you, I think it was yesterday, a link to the commission and to, um, you can access their past meetings. Uh, they've been uh, meeting now since January. They had a very mm -hmm. slow start from the time that the legislation was there. You can find information about the commission on the uh, Healthcare for All website. And then uh, also, as we are having our candidate forms, talk to here, it would be uh, Assembly uh, woman uh, Cecilia Aguilar Curry and to Senator Dodd mm -hmm. and just, you know, say we want we want health care to be top or, you know, very high on your priorities. And this mm -hmm. is what's happening to me so that that they can hear from their constituents to understand the urgency because uh, there's more people that are getting delays uh, with our current system. They may get denied going to a professional they need to and we end up with a lot of untoward um, consequences. So we need to make our uh, legislators very aware of it. And also talk to Garamandi too, uh, our congressman, mm -hmm. because um, he needs to hear from his constituents and understand how dire the need is. Uh, you know, in Yellow County, the, the numbers now that are unemployed, so they've lost their insurance. And uh, there's right. not many options right now there that are very viable. Great. And it's getting more okay. dire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you. I know you've had, you're, you're fresh off a four hour commission meeting. You're doing this interview, so I hope you have a chance to rest and, and recoup this afternoon. I think I, I, think I will. Yeah.
Yeah, the, the yeah. website again was uh, healthcareforall.org, okay. and that is the website yes. for healthcareforall.california. And we've been speaking with Millie Bronstein, who chairs the Yolo County chapter. Millie, thank you so much for your time and for continuing to do this work. I feel like this is your group has done very quiet but very steady work for quite a few years now, and and I hope that it begins to come forward and really get some attention at this point in time. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Not tough. Thank you, Robin. You've been watching in the studio, not in the studio. We're recording remotely during COVID-19 and a tip of the hat to our studio manager, Diane Dadashka, who makes this happen every time I sit here in front of the camera and talk to you. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time.